Well, Coach, we're uh, game week here. What's the uh, mood like inside this building? We're all excited, ready to go. Had another great day. I mean, it's cloudy, 72. Anybody can practice when it's probably cloudy, 72. Jeff, with the release of the depth chart yesterday, we saw Martavius French listed again. Is he back in action for you guys, or what's his status? Yeah, he's back, ready to go. When did he start practicing with the team again? Um, Probably three or four days ago, whenever uh, our uh, administration told me he was good to go. Is there anything you can share about that process or kind of what went into the decision to bring him back when you did? Uh, we just have a process. Whenever there's a situation, we look into it. It's not me that gets to do all that. It's powers above me, right? They look into it. They got their policy of how they handle it. And when they get through handling it, they let me know they're good or they're not good, and he was good to go. Was he voted into a single digit at the same time as everybody else, or was it a different process with him being away from the team at that point? No, he was voted in. Uh, players have a lot of belief in him, and, uh, as do the coaches, so he was voted in. Jeff, there was a lot of negative feedback when the statement was issued against Martavius, and now he's kind of back, and he's maybe one of the leaders of this team, it seems like. What's the, I guess, what's the message to the people who kind of had bad things to say about him in your program? Um, I don't, those kind of people in my life don't enter my mind. On the field, what does Martavius bring to that defensive group? Obviously a guy who's been in the system before and you know has the athleticism where he can you know, play up, play, play up, play back. I mean, what, what does he add to the defensive unit? I'm bleeding over. Is he, is he good at uh -oh. it? I mean, I bang myself up. Well, that's when you know you're getting old. When you look down, you're just bleeding out of your own. <laughs> um, a lot better than I got. Right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I put this thing in a cast. I'm so wounded over here. Obviously, he's played a lot of ball for us. But, you know, this is a process. Uh, unfortunately, he had to miss a long time. So, you know, he's out of shape. we got to get him back in shape because he hasn't been allowed to be around. So, so we've, we've got a ways to go. But once he gets his body right again, his mind right again, uh, he's one of the better players on our team, obviously. Conditioning, I mean, now that game week, week one, how, how quickly do you anticipate him getting back into that? Into that I, really, I really don't know. I mean, he's had, you know, a couple of workouts now, and we'll just have to see on that. We'll be smart with him. Uh, it's a long season. Coach Ty Milton was a name we hadn't talked about much through the fall, but we saw him pop up on the depth chart. What can you tell us about his process of kind of earning that spot and getting some looks? Uh, just to, yeah, like he's making plays in camp, and. You know, really a uh, guy that loves ball, loves to practice, and uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, we still got to play the games, right? So sometimes there are a couple of guys that look different when the games come on, and we think he's going to really come on during the games. I saw he committed, I think it was late May. What was the process like of getting him in here and getting him up to speed so quickly? Uh, just like it is with any of those kids. It's just the, new, the way of the new world. I mean, you just uh, – his uh, – his high school teammate was Nick Troy Fortune. Uh, Nick Troy really wanted him to play for us bad. And uh, Nick now coaches Converse Judson, coaches their corners as well. And Nick really wanted Ty here. So Nick really helped us with that. So we're very grateful for Nick and we're very grateful to get Ty in here. Obviously listing the two quarterbacks, Eddie Lee and Owen atop the depth chart. Um, are you expecting both will play this weekend? Uh, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. I don't know. And it, in your ideal sort of football world, would you like to get to a point this season where it's just one name at quarterback at top of the depth chart, not a not an or? Yeah, they'll be they will be one name, just not this week. Jeff, what led to the decision to slide Christian Clayton to end? Uh, some injury situations, and Christian's also really matured, and he has the ability to play two positions now. So uh, it's, it's as much a compliment to Christian as it is also kind of a need for our team right now. Yeah, I know you told us in the spring that you wanted to see him potentially kind of blossom into a more dominant type of player. Has he shown you anything since then that tells you that he's ready to take another step? I do believe that's coming. I do. Now, again, like I said earlier, with the, the game dictates a little bit more than practice sometimes, unfortunately. Uh, so it remains to be seen. But every indicator so far has shown us that he's fixing to step up. Another name I saw in there that I, we hadn't talked much about was O2? 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 Chad? Yeah. Yeah. What, how's he looked and what's his kind of upside? Shh. He's a true <laughs> freshman. I don't want him to come steal him yet. <laughs> I'm sure they've already got their watch dogs out. Uh, yeah, he loves football. He reminds me a lot of my guys that have been here five years now. He's an older defensive lineman. He loves to play. Uh, you know, 
too small, too this, too whatever, too short, arms too short, all that stuff people say. Kid's a ball player, twitchy, loves the game, high character. Um, those kind of guys tend to do really well. I saw Makai Hart was not listed. Is that an indicator that he might be out for a couple weeks here, or what's the status? You know, we're still trying. You know, we're still trying. We just, you know, we just can't get his knee right. I mean, structurally, it's fine. Just the pain he's in, it's just we haven't found a way to get into that pain yet. And we're trying. We're going to find another specialist for him now. And it's, 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 it's tough on that kid, man. He's a really good football player. And he's been through the, the works, man. I haven't him and JT Clark on there. It's a very painful deal for us. But we'll play with the ones that are out there. Is JT making progress? How's that look? He is. Uh, he is. He's he's coming along. Just we're going to be very careful with him and just be smart. What is it about that offensive unit over there that's keeping Coach up at night when you're looking at film? Uh, theirs or ours? Theirs. Uh, just the option, you know, quarterback, dive, pitch. Today we didn't play the quarterback, and there he went. And ten guys did great. One guy did bad. All you guys are going to be talking about how terrible we were on defense. And we're going to have 10 guys grayed out with a plus, one guy with a minus, and they got seven points. That's a bad feeling. What's keeping you up at night on the Roadrunner side? Uh, about us? Yeah. Oh, probably just the unknown. You know, I've done it long enough that sometimes the game doesn't go like practice. It's the it's dangest thing ever because you think you know because you're out there practicing and practicing and practicing. But, it might be a matchup where your offensive tackle, there's a certain kid on my team, or two or three, he just knows every one of their moves because he practices them so much. And he plays incredible all during practice and you get them in the game and they don't look as good. Those kind of things, the fear of the unknown. I think I know our team pretty well, but there's just a lot of uh, unknowns out there. Uh, so just that. About how long you've been in a lot of these first games, not only at the collegiate level, but the high school level, how long during that first game before you kind of really start to settle in and get your feet kind of down on the ground to where it was like you know what's going on? Yeah, dude, that's a really good question. Uh, JJ had two yesterday and you're already off to one already today. I think it changes each year you do it, honestly. Uh, you know, we've got a new center. We're going to have a new left tackle. We're going to have a new right tackle. We're going to have new receivers out there. We're going to have a new quarterback out there. That's just a lot of change, right? So uh, I'd say it's going to be a while offensively before I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Uh, defensively, we're pretty mature and veteran. Uh, that would be pretty alarming if we went out there on defense and we got lit up quickly, right? Uh, now we had to replace Rashad Wisdom. And I know all you guys are worried about our corners. And, um, and that's a great, that's all valid, excuse me. Uh, but I feel very confident about our corners. I really do. I, I feel really confident about our defense, period. We've been talking about it a lot over the summer, but obviously the higher emphasis on non-conference play with the expanded playoff and you know, UTSA you know, really trying to flip the script from last year's non-conference start. But is there a different feeling then on week, week zero, week one for you guys going into your first game? No, philosophically, we're not changing anything as far as the game plan or the game, I'd say practice intensity of, of just the physicality of maybe having more edge early uh, where I've been a little more careful in the past to play our way into shape if that's the way you might understand it uh, but you know somehow this has gotten taken slightly out of context like we haven't been trying to win the games in September we've been trying to win them uh, just maybe our approach to how we win them is taking a little more of a feverish pitch uh, in fall count, just with the physicality. Um, and we'll see, you know, we'll see how we hold up in November and December and October where we've been fantastic because we get better every week around here. And uh, I just hope we start better and then continue to get better each week, what I hope. Do you think part of that might be a little bit less experimentation with, you know, working with guys deeper on the depth chart and playing a tighter rotation early in the year? Or do you plan to do that the same way you have in years past? Yeah, not so ever. That will, that will never change. We, we'll always be deep. We'll always play a lot of people. Um, that's philosophically a belief that's proven true for a long time. Uh, it takes a lot of players to be really good at this game. It's a very physical game. And no matter how hard we all try to prevent injuries, it's just part of the game. So you gotta have a bunch of people.
it's not fair to kids uh, to put them on the bench the entire year. And then in the conference championship game, y'all expect this guy to roll out there uh, and be some superstar when he hadn't touched the field for 10 or 11 games. I just don't want that on my watch uh, when I sleep at night. I want to know every kid's been given an opportunity in the game to prepare for the games that matter most. Now, unfortunately, we've always said, you know, around here, the games in November, the ones you remember, right? Well, now the ones in September, you're going to remember too because you don't get any mulligans. We're not a school that gets a mulligan. You know, those other guys get to lose two and possibly three and still get invited. We we don't get a mulligan. we got to keep our ball in the fairway all 18 holes, right? And that's that's tough to do. How, what's the last question for me? What, what's the biggest difference with Jeff Trailer from your first – season opener as a UTSA's head coach to now, you know, you've been around here a little over half a decade. Man, another really good question. They tied you up, JJ. Uh, the group too, JJ too, yesterday. Um, the biggest difference, you know, I know when my mom sends me videos um, that I look a hell of a lot older. Uh, there's a lot more gray through here. Uh, the wrinkles on my face are really gross. Uh, I've just aged like Obama and Clinton uh, in these five years. I think I've served a couple of terms here, boys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs>